Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. Today, we have three new stories to tell. And what if Karen really wants to see the baker? The answer in our first story. Get me the baker from the back. I work in a flower shop inside a mall. The mall also has a very nice supermarket. It's one of those high-end supermarkets with departments for fresh food. The bakery department has a baker making fresh bread and buns in the day, and the chain has never had a flower department, so it isn't common in my country. Monday wasn't very busy. I took my lunch break relatively early in the day. The butcher in the supermarket deli is a good friend, and he often lets me try new things for a good price. I was excited to go while he still had hot food left. So I was walking quickly, wearing our uniform, a green shirt and green apron, with the name and logo of the flower shop on it. The supermarket employees wear red shirts and black aprons. The bakery is the first thing a customer encounters after entering the shop. We have to walk through it in order to get to the deli counter. I tried weaving through the crowd of slow-moving customers with large carts when my path was literally blocked by one of those carts. A little old lady stood in front of me. Do you have any bread today? Me. Sorry, I'm not sure. I work in the flower shop. I don't remember seeing that bread here, but if you ask the baker, she can help you. I can't see her right now. She might be on her break and should be back soon. I shouldn't have referred to the baker by her name. The lady started following me through the shop. I took a narrow shortcut toward the deli section and lost her. It was already sold out of pizza and taco subs, so I got a bowl of microwavable barley porridge. I love that stuff. There were no spoons there, so I hurried over to the salad bar to grab one before queuing up between the large carts. Literally on my way to the queue, the cart blocked me again. I can't find the baker. Did you find her for me back there? Me. Sorry, I'm on my lunch break and on my way back to the flower shop. I'm not allowed to go into the break room of a shop I don't work in. Maybe if you ask the cashier, they can call for a bakery employee. In the meantime, two other large carts had pushed in front of me, and I was holding my lunch in my hands. Cashier. Flower shop stories. I can help you over here. It doesn't help that we all know each other by name in this mall. The lady actually followed me out of the supermarket and into the flower shop afterwards. She looked very confused and left when the manager asked if she could help her. She didn't understand why you went into the flower shop to work when you were clearly a bakery employee. And our second story. Nightmare vows to never come again. Hello again. I recently made a post on this subreddit and now I have another. I've got a lot of stories and I'll be posting more. This time it's about the time I quit my job and was returning my uniform. So technically I had worked there just two days beforehand. So if I'm in the wrong subreddit, please let me know. I may have misread some rules. Also, I'd like to apologize in advance for formatting because I'm on my phone and don't know what it'll do. On to the story. Having worked at this place, gas station slash cafe, for six going on seven years, I was a pretty well-known employee among the regulars. Some were cool people, but the lady in question was a regular nightmare. Most of the staff hated her. She ordered six large coffees every time she came in, very particular with her coffee often chastised us when we were too slow, cut lines sometimes, and demanded respect if someone dared bring it up, would always give one coffee saying it was wrong. I'm not kidding about that. I've never seen anyone not remake her coffee. It became a store urban legend that one of our lazier employees changed the lids, gave it a swirl, and gave her back the same coffee like a minute later, and she left in her usual mood. Whether or not it happened, who knows, but knowing that employee, it probably did. So I decided to leave, saying my last goodbyes to everyone, uniform handed in, I left through one of the staff doors. Lo and behold, on the other side, like a horrible jump scare, is the nightmare lady. Hey, she says to me, her tone authoritative, looking directly at me. I don't give her the customer service smile. Why is your service so slow today? And why are you out of uniform? You should be happier to see me. That's entirely unprofessional. She probably expected an apology. An explanation, a free coffee for her trauma of seeing someone not wearing a uniform walking out of the staff room without a bright smile to greet her horrible self. What monster would say such a thing? Instead, I say, nope, I quit, don't care. And her eyes narrow. 
She looks at me like I'm disgusting trash, and I start walking away from her. Imagine if I had actually sworn at her like I would under any other setting. Where do you think you're going? The woman asks, her voice rising, and honestly, it's the tone I now forever imagine entitled mothers using. Instead of verbally responding, or even looking back, I peace out at her with one hand and leave. When I get home, I find that there were plenty of messages in the work discord. I decide to open them. The nightmare lady had demanded to see a manager, spent five minutes yelling at her to fire me for flipping her off and poor customer service, refused to believe that I had actually already resigned, informed my ex-manager that she's lost a very loyal and valuable customer, and apparently the manager just stood there and took it with nods, apologies, and a constant, she does not work here. The nightmare lady apparently forgot her coffees too, and they haven't seen her since. They thank me for that and the entertainment of her screaming at the manager who was always customer service first. And our third story. You want me to do that, officer? Wrong department, buddy. So I worked for the IT help desk of our local city council. When one early morning at around 5.30 a.m., my mother stormed into my room, scaring the crap out of me and my cat. Half asleep, I asked why she was screaming at me. Clearly in a panic, she told me that the police were on the phone asking for me. Now, I won't go into detail, but suffice to say, my first thoughts were, what did I do now? And, wait, I didn't do anything, did I? Still half asleep, I walked downstairs, got on the phone, and vaguely asked, yes? I got a reply along the lines of, damn it, it's always the same with you guys. Don't you know it's market day? Me. Uh, yeah? Every Wednesday, isn't it? It is every Wednesday. Has been since around 1302 AD. Police officer. What, are you going to start making a joke out of this? Me. Slowly starting to wake up completely. Uh, no, I just don't get... Police cutting me off angrily. Your car is on the market square, and they can't set up their stalls, damn it. Get over here now and move this damn car. The IT department was next to the market square, so sometimes the car did indeed stay parked there overnight. Me. Really having issues with people screaming at me. No problem. Be right there. Now, usually I rode my bike to work, but seeing as it was clearly a pressing matter, I asked my dad, who'd awoken from my mother's frantic behavior, to drive me to the market square. On the way there, I explained the situation, and my dad couldn't help but give a chuckle and told me, don't do anything stupid. To which I gave him a smile, shrugged, and said with a Han Solo-esque grin, hey, it's the cops. My father snickered and shook his head, knowing that doing something stupid was kind of my middle name. If a police officer tells you to do something, you do it, right? So we arrived at the market where people were already setting up stalls to prepare for the market day, except for where I spotted the car of the IT hardware department and about 15 meters behind it, a police car with its lights flashing. I got out, walked slowly over to the two officers that were standing near their car, one of them immediately launched into a tirade about how we were all the same and how it was IT guys always thinking they ran things, which basically we did, including their IT. Once he paused, I calmly asked him what he wanted me to do. Again, he blew up nearly screaming, move the effing car. Not wanting there to be any doubt, I asked if he was sure and he truly lost it, screaming incoherently words like hole, arrest, and jail me okay okay calm down i'll do it if you insist to let me go up to the office and look for the keys so off i went i went to our offices and was met by the cleaning slash coffee lady who asked why i was in so early i explained the situation that the hardware department's car was on the market square again confused she asked me but that's not your department is it to which i sighed nope do you know where the keys are so together, we looked for the keys, which we found rather quickly. I asked if she'd accompany down because the police were making me nervous, which she kindly and graciously did. Upon getting back down, it was clear that the angry one hadn't calmed down and that I'd probably taken longer to go get the keys than he wanted. In quick strides, he walked up to us, and without a word, I tried to hand him the keys, which he didn't notice because he screamed in an angry and high-pitched voice, MOVE THE DAMNED CAR! At this point, our cleaning slash coffee lady looked at me and said, but you, I shrugged and gave her the most roguish smile I could muster at the time. 
She smiled, gently shaking her head. Once more, and just to make sure I got things straight, I calmly and politely asked, you're telling me I have to move that car. Now, I'd seen cops get angry before, but never turn red with figurative steam coming out of their ears. He blew up, pulled out his nightstick, took one step forward as if to indicate I was getting close to either getting arrested or smacked over the head. I turned and quickly made it over to the car, nervously, but loudly muttering things like, under duress and not my job. I got in the car, fumbled with the keys somewhat, and in three or four tries started the car. I waited about a minute, then the car sputtered forward and stopped. I tried again. Again, the car sputtered, but then it took off like a friggin' rocket. All I remember from the short drive is seeing our cleaning slash coffee lady bursting out laughing as I passed just before I plowed straight into the police car. As I was getting out, somewhat dazed, I saw the two police officers stand there, white as sheets, utterly perplexed. I stammered at the immortal words, I don't know how to drive, man. I just pick up the phones and help people. So yes, they called the only person in all the IT department that didn't have a driver's license and just worked the phones. And one that doesn't really like the police, nor getting woken up hours before I have to. I suffered no consequences, as there were CCTV cameras filming it all with audio, which I of course knew, and our cleaning slash coffee lady clearly heard the cop order me to move the car, Having known the mayor since I was 12 helped too, of course. So the moral of the story is, always do what the police tell you to do. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.